Hello and welcome to another JavaScript tutorial. In this tutorial we will be working with arrays. An array is a very important concept in programming. A few tutorials back I introduced you to the concept of a variable. So let's look at the definition of a variable again. A variable is defined as a memory space which to you as a programmer you refer to by a name and to the underlying computer it refers to it by some kind of a memory location. So it's just a memory space. In this memory space you can hold only one value. If you write the second value the first value will be overwritten. So that's what a variable is. An array is a multi-valued variable. That means it can maintain several values of the same type at the same time. Therefore, what we do is we create a named entity called array and give, us, give it X number of continuous blocks of memory. So since it's a continuous block of memory, all the slots in are in a row so you could easily go from one slot to the next. So an array is pretty much a continuous block of memory of same type can hold several values at the same time. That's what basically an array is. You will define a variable like this variable name equals to some kind of a name. This is how you will define a variable. How will you define an array? Let's say if I had to define an array called names and I would like to store 15 names in it. We after equals to sign, we write a JavaScript keyword new, which means I would like to allocate new memory, not just one, but several memory blocks. Now the question comes in how many? So then you call upon this built-in class array and to you basically notify it, I would like to allocate five memory blocks. So now this is a message to the JavaScript, allocate five memory blocks. Now how will you refer to each memory block? Well you write the name of the array and then you use this subscript operator and with between the two you write the array location. Array location equals to first name, array location, the second name, third name, fourth name, and fifth name. So five names in total. Now you must be wondering, he allocated five memory blocks and when he started sequencing them, he started sequencing them from zero. Even though I have five names, but the sequence number that I've used is zero, one, two, three, four versus one, two, three, four, five. And the reason you will gonna see this in most of the programming languages is because whenever you define an array, an array always points at the first memory location the first memory block in a continuous blocks. That very first memory block is called the current location of the array. And the numbers that you see within the subscript operators, try to understand them like this as to the number of jumps. For example, if I'm saying nums names zero, that means I'm referring to the current location of an array where I am storing the name Sam. Names one mean one away from the current location, I'm storing the name Sarah. Two means two spaces away from current. Three means three spaces away from current. And four means four spaces away from current. So that's how arrays are sequenced in a continuous block of memory where the first block always refers to zero. So it's not really a sequence number, it is the location position and the number of jumps you are away from the current location. 
And each one of these numbers are called index numbers, or the plural is indices. It is very easy to traverse through an array. For example, if I had to display these arrays back, I can run a loop through them because I know all their position numbers are in sequence. I can say, okay, counter equals to zero, counter less than five, or less than equals to four. Either way, it'll go to work. And I will going to display the names. And I will going to run the variable counter through them. So the first time the loop runs, since the value of counter is zero, it will going to display the first name. Then it will going to break row. And will going to then display the second name in the next iteration. And like that, it will going to display all five names. That's why we say it's extremely powerful language, because it allows you to traverse through a block very easily. So here you can see in this example that it lists all the names. Now if I would like these names to be displayed in a bulleted fashion, I could also do that. Before I start in going into the loop, I can start unordered list. I can close this unordered list outside of the loop. If you may remember from our previous tutorial, if there is only one line associated, you do not have to put curly braces. And now after making these changes, if I refresh my list, here you go, you can see the bullets. So arrays are extremely powerful, and loops add a lot of functionalities to the array. So always remember these basic things, that when declaring an array, the array has a name, which has the same naming conventions as does the variable. Must start with a letter, could be alphanumeric, no spaces are allowed, keywords should not be used. Equals to new, which means I would like to allocate new memory, array, which is a built-in class with an uppercase A, and in the parentheses you got to tell how many blocks you need. If you say I need 15 blocks, then when you will be referring to these 15 blocks, the first block, which is your current block, will be referred to as the block number 0. So the index will be 0 because it's your current location. Whereas the last location will be 14, so you always have to make sure that the number of blocks you maintain is equals to the number of blocks you allocated when declaring an array. So if I say 0 through 15, that means I am referring to 16 blocks when I only have 15. So this is the only thing that you got to be careful, that the memory allocation is based on how many you need, and the index numbers is based on 0 through 1 less than the total. Anyway, I'll catch you in the next tutorial where we'll talk about functions and uh, so that you can learn about the modularization. Thank you for watching.